It's just a lot of wonderful words <clears throat> in there and great stories. So uh, it, it was a lot of fun. And I just, it was uh, the type of role I had. There was obviously a lot of freedom to have fun. You know, the more fun you have, probably the better uh, the character will come to life. So it was a great experience. We did, uh, we did the two scenes with uh, um, Katie and Vanessa, and uh, we had a character, Sam I Am. Um, we did four audition days. We, we uh, saw more than 200 people, and we just couldn't find that one person. And I remember back in a premiere that I wrote, this guy came up to me and he said, hey, uh, um, you know, I loved your writing. If there's a part for me, can you write it? And, and that night, that's when I wrote Sam I Am. And thankfully, Eddie came down, killed it. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, you know, and, and, and it's cool. Uh, how do you all feel about the cast of the uh, film? I mean, we're, 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 weren't they kicking? They were amazing. Uh, everybody, everybody that came in, um, they were like, uh, as soon as they came in, boom, they, you know, they had a cast. Vanessa killed it. Katie killed it. Well, I mean, Vinny already had a part. We're, you know, we're inseparable. Him and him, him and Nick and I. Only person who uh, uh, I think auditioned for a part. Re really, who I didn't know about was Roger Rignac. He played the pooch with sciatica. If you're up there, Roger. There he is, Roger. There he is. <laughs> he, he auditioned for, uh, uh, for a teabag, Tony. Uh, but then, you know, I said, you know what? I got a, kind of a better role for you. And the whole, it, it's just this guy with a gun. Um, sciatica, he came up with. Falling, he came up with. The guy was just nuts. <laughs> it was just crazy. Um, oh, and okay, so... Uh, Say, say, some, say something that you remember about shooting the film, how, how awesome I was. <laughs> truthfully, he, he, I, I did not know he was going to ask me this. I really truthfully do think he's awesome. Um, he is such a visionary and so unique. He's putting together so many things I feel like we just haven't seen together before. Um, really drawing from a variety of different genres. And I saw that even in the audition sides, that the dialogue was so unique, and I'm one of those actors that really, you know, really get excited about the words. Um, not, not all actors necessarily do that, but I was so enthralled by the way that everybody spoke and the opportunity to say things that I, I kind of immediately wanted to make this like a film noir kind of person, but with this modern vernacular, and I was just thrilled. And uh, really, what's that? Um, Dakota is very kind. Uh, yes, <laughs> there was. I had an idea that this character was um, to be a little bit of a film noir kind of. I, I was inspired to think like you know Double Indemnity and Barbara Stanwyck and some sort of film noir characters that I was really excited about. And Dakota was kind enough to let me play with that, and and it really turned into um, for my storyline turned into sort of the identity of what was going to happen with this person and the the parts, the scenes that were her scenes had that film noir vibe. And uh, Dakota's very generous. He's very willing to listen to the actors and very willing to try things and really um, is willing to see what happens in the moment and is not hell-bent on making it go his way. And I think it's really to his credit. And then, you know, I get to benefit from that because I'm contributing and then I, and then I feel special. So thank you very much. I appreciate every and, opportunity. And, and we did light it that way. I mean, we, we color, I made the colorist go, okay, give me a 50s kind of feel. That's why every footage that you see her is either, you know, in an old, grainy kind of, Things, you know, suggesting that I guess we talked about it, you were you were turned into a vampire in the fifties, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That I had been sort of the undead for you know several years now. So, I, I mean, to me, I mean, to me, this whole thing is a comedy. I was, uh, uh, I mean, everyone was like, oh, okay, but there's you know the scene. So we had, uh, in one of the key scenes, um, we we needed someone who was funny. The hardest thing in the world is to find someone funny, cute too. You know, cute's always absolutely, but you need to find someone funny, and I want, and I needed to interject someone who was funny in a scene where both my main characters die. <laughs> so Katie came in, um, and uh, she was the only person who uh, actually read for it in that kind of vein. Oops, I guess I got it wrong. <laughs> um, I actually remember very distinctly in the audition that um, uh, unveiling the bullet wound and, and fake dry heaving. And you both, you and Craig were both like, oh, that's it. And I was like, oh, that was easy. OK. Um, yeah, that was, a, uh, I would say, a strange experience and probably a once in a lifetime opportunity to have a gun held to my head and be trying to be 
funny at the same time. And it was 45 degrees. Yeah, that was, that was a fun scene. She was freezing. It was December. It was, we were all covered in fake blood. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was, we did it. It's hardcore. I liked it. <laughs> we did it in my sister's and my da uh, father's warehouse. That's why you could see all the product placement tropics and tropical and stuff. And, uh, and so, uh, so in the rehearsal, Vinny goes, hey, wouldn't it be funny if, you know, uh, if I just took Katie's jacket off? And I was like, no. <laughs> and we didn't know. So I'm like, no, Katie, you're wrong. That's really is funny. So then we get to the warehouse. It really is 45 degrees outside. Uh, and the warehouse is a freezer. So you have to add that to it. And to top it off, it was raining. <laughs> so uh, Brenda was in this. It was it's a freezer. It's like an, it's like an actual yeah. freezer. It's an actual it's a real freezer. Yeah. <laughs> right. So uh, awesome. so so Vinny's got a jacket and Brenda's in the gurney, but there's a heater underneath there. The metal table was like a fire table. Yeah. Right. So every time Vinny would fall down dead, he would like burn, scratch his face, and he's just like, oh, cut, cut. <laughs> Except for Katie, she's just like freezing. And we didn't realize this, but that's all. That's all Vinny. Vinny think that shit's funny. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That actual scene we shot, uh, that was probably one of the first scenes we shot to the film. Um, that was, yeah, pretty much, was it the first or second day, right? So that scene came before all of them. And we did a walk around the, the warehouse and there was blood. You know, we, we knew about the... We had an idea of what the scene was going to entail, so we thought, you know, there's a, a stainless steel meat slab in that in that warehouse, and it actually had a round hole on the bottom for blood to drip. So we thought we'd use that and make it really, you know, uh, the real deal. And it, I think it worked, and, and it was very cold. It was a very cold morning. It was into the morning. It was like two or three in the morning. I, I didn't tell you, there was one time where I had to cancel rehearsal. We were in the warehouse, and, uh, you know, there's this meat kind of, you know, uh, scent to it, I guess. Uh, and so there was this sort of like, the, yeah, the scent of meat. Uh, and then at one time we had this rehearsal, um, and then the, and so you have the scent of meat permeating the air, uh, and across the street, a neighbor just refertilized their lawn, right? So you got dead meat, and you got shit just sort of like coagulating. <laughs> Like a big cloud, and I remember, uh, you know, Yvonne is just like she can't even, she can't believe that she's in here. And I walked in, and I go, oh my god, it smells like India in here. So, I, so we had actually, uh, I had to cancel rehearsal. Just, you know, I didn't want to get, I didn't want to have any shit in that hair. Uh, um, oh, uh, okay. So, tell, tell them how we started to make a movie. Um, well, it started. Um, well, they know about the three stories you had originally, right? And then you thought, well, we'll do one story at a time and then have them as three short stories in the one film. And then, um, well, you, your, in, your genius mind <laughs> came up with the idea that you need to twine the stories around all the characters. And uh, I killed you with the second act. <laughs> yeah, you and killed me. Well, that's right. We, uh, I ended up dying early in the film and... And uh, the girl is sitting there going, mm, maybe we should change that. Maybe we should put this scene towards the end of the film. So, uh, you know, people don't feel sad that you've gone so soon. You know? so, so that was all changed. And um, I think the film, it, what it is now, has probably, uh, it, it's turned out fantastic. Um, it's, it's, it's a big achievement. Um, Dakota is very easy to work with. He's... Uh, um, allows so much freedom and um, allows the actors to add so much of their own craft to his work. Um, I think for a first directorial, well, you did a stage show, a stage production, but working behind the camera is a lot different. Um, and I think uh, Dakota did a great job on his first uh, feature film. One of the reasons why I wanted to um, um, put people up here. Um, just you know, just to you know, um, cast a light on like on like the actor life. Um, it's very hard, especially you know, if you put them in silly situations and just, just boost that energy. You know, they have a real chance to to make them look like a fool. If I don't know what I'm doing or someone doesn't know, they can really look foolish. So just to put their faith in me and, and for me to reciprocate.